Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. I'm in my paint booth and today we're going to be painting that lipless crankbait that we put a rattle in on that last video. I was having a hard time making up my mind what color pattern to use on the thing and then I filled this with a drink and I thought hmm how about that color? So I'm thinking about doing it a, a warm mouth uh, color pattern and I'll put a picture of a warm mouth here but I'm gonna do it very similar to how I did the cup. And that is, I'm gonna start off with a silver base and then I'm gonna build colors up from there. So stick around. Okay, so I've got this on my rotational holder here, ready to rock. My first color is gonna be this wicked aluminum and it's a createx product so i'm going to put in a full layer going to paint the whole thing silver and then we'll go from there So I need to do a little bit of background uh, shading. So I'm going to take some transparent black and just haze it in on top and just a little bit down here, uh, just barely visible, and then we'll come back for the scales. I'll have to do a voiceover for the rest of this since I've got the extractor fan going and it gets kind of loud. I start with transparent black to get that undershading. Here I'm putting in the mesh so I can start to put down some nice detail. Now this is uh, a mesh with some wider openings to create a broader look and then I'll stack some smaller scale patterns on this just to give it kind of a 3D more of a depth kind of look. I'm spraying on some transparent gold here. It's actually a color called Sunrise Yellow. It's a Createx color, but it really creates a really a gold finish uh, when you have a reflective surface like that aluminum paint. Here I'm putting down some pale opaque yellow. And the reason I'm doing that is I really want to create a uh, really bright contrast between the darker stripes that I'll put down later. Now you can clearly see those larger scale patterns. Now I put on the uh, smaller scale pattern mesh and I'm starting with that uh, opaque black from testers. I'm getting those vertical stripes in. Now the fish naturally has stripes that aren't really uniform. They're kind of ragged and broken. And so I'm trying to stay pretty loose with the way I'm spraying it. I'll add a few spots just to make it look a little broken and then I put in just a hint of a lateral line. I'll do the same on the other side matching the location of those stripes the best I can. There's that lateral line again. Now if you take a close look right behind the eye at the gills, I also added some bright yellow just to give some contrast to what I'm about to do next, and that is to put a gill spot on. But first, 
I'm misting it down with some transparent bright green, also a Createx color. And I'm doing that because the fish in my lake tend to be greener and not that sort of two-toned in that photograph. Now I've come in with some transparent black just to darken everything at the top. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply this little template just to create those gill spots. And you can see that bright yellow really makes it stand out quite a bit. Now I'm putting in those face stripes that the fish has. They're kind of weird, but I'm trying to make it as accurate as I can. Along with these spots, I'm blending in the black around the eye. And now a little red. This is actually transparent red. Just to give it that bleeding gill, red chin kind of look. Well, that looks pretty good to me. Now I apply a little bit of the Minwax Polyacrylic. This is a clear coat, but it's water-based, and it makes a really good base coat or mid coat and gives you a better and more predictable clear coat later. Now I just mount it on my holder and it's ready for clear coating. So the paint job is done. I've got a uh, protective coating of uh, the polyacrylic and that'll give me a nice mid coat to uh, adhere the clear coat to. So now it's just a matter of letting this dry for a few hours and then I'll put a UV clear coat on it and then we'll take it to the lake and get some underwater shots. All right, it's been about 40 minutes and it's ready to come out. Well, I like the finish. It looks real good. The clear coat is perfect. Here's a little slideshow of some better photographs. Okay, let's go ahead and throw it in the water. Here it is underwater. And you can clearly see the shimmy. It has a really nice wiggle to it. Unfortunately, the sound of the motor and the bubbles and the water obscure the sound of the rattle. But I really like the action on this lure. It hunts. It actually diverges left and right here and there and then comes back to zero. Here it is at about half motion. So I decided to go ahead and mount the camera to the dock so I can get a still shot. You can see the fish under the dock. Now the camera is still and you can definitely hear that rattle.
Well, I hope you enjoyed the painting demonstration. I'm pretty happy with the results. I think it came out about how I expected. It's got a nice realistic look, a little bit of detail, and a little more than I usually do. As far as these next two, I'm going to get a good gloss clear on it and then save them to do with the rest of the lures that I'm going to silver plate. And after I silver plate them, I'm going to turn them gold. They're going to be completely gold all the way around and they're going to be red fish bombs. So if you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. And if you've got questions, certainly ask them. And if you have suggestions, certainly offer them up. I enjoy reading them. So until next time, I'll see you on the next video.